praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate together the life of George Fox. We come together in our grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death the resurrection. We welcome you here to Community United Methodist Church. If this is your first time here, I just want to point out to you that if you are in need of uh, the facilities, our restroom, to go out the doors this way, and they are just down the hall here to your left. We give thanks for this opportunity to celebrate together the life of George Fox. Dying Christ restored, destroyed death, and rising Christ restores our life. Christ will come again in glory, and as in baptism, George Fox put on Christ, so in Christ may he be clothed with glory. Here and now, friends, we are God's children, and what we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Will you join with me as uh, standing as you are able as we sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness. The words can be found in your program.
as we join our hearts in prayer. Let us bow together. Let's just take a deep breath in and blow slowly out. One more time, deep breath in as we welcome God's spirit and blow slowly out, allowing our God to rest in us. O God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before, our, before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Jesus, our risen Lord, you have gone before us in death. Grant us the assurance of your presence that we who are anxious and fearful in the face of death may confidently face the future, knowing that you prepare a place for all who love you. Eternal God, we thank you for the many who have finished lives in faith and now rest from their labor. And we praise you for those dear to us, naming them in our hearts before you. This day especially we praise you and thank you for our brother George Fox, whom we entrust into your gracious presence. Let your light shine on these, your sons and daughters, and help us O oh Lord, to believe where we have not yet seen. Lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home that is not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The scripture reading this day comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Psalm 23 is a favorite in times of life and in times of death because it tells of a God who is a good shepherd in the best and the worst of times, a God who is strong, whom we can rely on when turmoil and the confusion of death is near, at times when we feel lost. This has been a season of sickness and death around us in a whole different way all around the world. And more often, don't we try to keep death neatly in its place, avoiding it, pretending it doesn't exist or impact us until we walk into it, when it steps in our way, when death gets our attention. And we find that often when death comes near, we still feel a bit shocked, even when we see that it is coming close. But Psalm 23 is a prayer written by King David, a great hero of the Bible, a man after God's own heart, a great and powerful king who directed armies and ruled over a great kingdom of people, providing and caring for so, so many that even this king knew that he too needed someone to look to, to provide, to make him lie down, that he would need help in dark valleys, that this king, this mighty and great man knew that we all will need help at some time. King David tells us of his good shepherd who puts us down in green pastures, who makes him lie down, 
puts him to bed, calms him, and leads him in his need. I remember when I was younger in elementary school and I was playing with my cousins and we played and played and it was so late before dinner was served and that I was so exhausted that my mother had to try to feed me because I couldn't even quite eat for myself. I wanted to play, but I was sleepy and I was grouchy and I was hungry and falling asleep and kind of hangry at the same time. I don't know, it's been a long time since someone has needed to feed me like that. Could be so tired that we can't quite take a bath and my mother needed to help me. Maybe you remember those times with your children or your grandchildren or your parents doing that for you. Maybe it's been a long time. But friends, even as adults, We can still get like that, can't we? Exhausted, lost, needing help. Our Lord is with us to care for us, to guide us. This shepherd, this good shepherd restores our soul. How do you do that? That part of us that connects to God that sometimes just takes a beating, can get disconnected. Our shepherd puts that connection back together. In the King James Version, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Perhaps you too can think of those valleys of sorrow, of despair that you have passed through. Things that felt awful at the time. And when you look back, and maybe even in the midst of it, in the middle of the pain, you could see and know that the Lord was walking with you through it. That you were not alone. That you would yet get through it. Such good news for us all in the very places where we need help, where we feel so alone and afraid, God is surely with us. It says when enemies are nearby, when trouble is all around, that in that very moment and place that God feeds us with a feast, not just little bits or snacks or MREs, but a feast, anointing our heads, blessing us with the Holy Spirit. Our God is not afraid, has resources, calls us his own. This shepherd is gracious and powerful and tender. In the message translation, a a contemporary language version, the psalm ends with, Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Our God is not just waiting on us to ask to find where God is. God is actively pursuing, running after us, trying to get our attention to show us God's goodness and mercy, leading us through the ups and downs, the valleys and hills of life till we come to that final valley, that final valley of physical death that Jesus himself has been through. And he leads us in victory to our final home. Friends, God loved the world so much that he sent his own son, Jesus, that all who believe in him may not, will not perish but have eternal life. God is calling to us. Come, all who are weary, and put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn your heart, your mind, your life to God, asking God's forgiveness, receiving his mercy, his Holy Spirit to live in you and with you this very day until we meet him face to face. As King David said, 
I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I give thanks for that assurance to all who follow, for our dear brother George's new and final home, where he is being greeted by his Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, we want to bring your attention to the um, obituary in, uh, in your programs that share about the life of our dear brother George. And we would like to make this opportunity now for those who would like to share a brief word of remembrance, to share a memory, a story, perhaps your appreciation of George. And if you would like to share, uh, Jean will bring around the microphone to you to share from where you are. So we invite uh, anyone who would like to share, if you'd like to raise your hand, and we could come to you. Brother Pastor Ron. To the Falk families, and Lois especially, um, I was a pastor when, about over nine years ago, and I've been retired over two, and when I came, George was one of the greedy, greeters uh, with his kindness up front at the door. And I might say that we had a gathering of a small gathering at the George and Lois's home. And um, I think of that because of the feasts that uh, Pastor Ann mentioned, because they fed us well. And I wanted to go back again and again. <laughs> and uh, their kindness and thoughtfulness was always there. Uh, George got ill, of course, and we missed him out front greeting people. The Bible talks about gatekeepers, and he was not a gatekeeper, uh, which keeps people out. He was a, a greeter that welcomed people, mm. and they both welcomed people, their kindness and their thoughtfulness. I think of the scripture that it says that Jesus was full of grace and truth. And some of us are full of grace and love and kindness, but we don't want to tell the truth. We can't handle the truth. But Jesus was both. And uh, Paul says, speak the truth in love. Mm. And so that's what I experienced with George and Lois. And Lois just uh, was thrilled every time I'd come and give communion. And uh, even though George did not understand all uh, I could see her kindness and love was just so constant. Um, this morning, I was reading my meditations, and I'll share this with you as I close, is uh, I read meditations almost daily. Uh, devotions have been a strength of mine since I was 18, and that's nearly 57 years ago, in which you read a meditation, you have a thought, and you have a scripture, one page, a, you know, 365 pages, and many authors do that. I have a half a dozen I'm reading now. And the author said this morning that at the end of our journey, uh, Jesus did not say, well said. He did not say, well thought. He didn't say, well pleased. He said, well done. Come into my kingdom, mm. you good and faithful servant. And let me add this caveat. Uh, with Lois... Uh, Jesus is still saying, well doing, well doing. Thank you, Lois, for all your kindness and love. And it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Greetings, I'm Shelton Welch. I'm the cousin of George and Lois. Ella Lois is my mom, was my mom's first cousin. Um, we go back several years with our reunion. I just remember how uh, faithful and dedicated George was and getting all the research done for on our family history. He was so um, eloquent with it and so efficient with it. Uh, I couldn't imagine how he was just taking all this data and his computer and just spending time um, going through it, calling us, as well as getting time with George. Just, uh, when he was up and well, he was just a very much of a hospital person, both him and my cousin, Ella Lois. And I just remember the many times they spent, when I was in Southern California with my family, they would come down and visit. Of course, Eric was just a little boy at that point in time, but I just enjoyed um, being around the Falk family and, and really appreciate what George has done here on Earth, as well as Ella Lois and Eric. Amen. 
my name is Lynn Fox, and I am the daughter of George's uh, brother, Arthur. And I just want to say that I'm thankful to have had George as an uncle because he was so full of love. Mm -hmm. He loved his parents. He was devoted to his wife. He loved his son. And he taught us all to love each other and not to ever and let anything come between family. Mm -hmm. And so for that, I'm thankful. That's the lesson I learned. And um, I wish him well. Amen. George was also my uncle, but he was my uncle by marriage. But, you know, you never think of that difference. Uh, Lois, Lois is my father's sister. And George was the best uncle that I've ever had. Um, he was there for us. We, we had a very uh, close relationship. And he was always positive. He was inspirational. He was, he was a leader. And he was, you know, the kind of man that, um, that most men wanted to be, especially young men, and the kind of husband that a lot of my friends wish they had. <laughs> They're always saying that they wish they had a husband like George, you know. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was a role model. And, you know, just as Christians, we're supposed to be a light. And he was that. I am uh, again. Uh, George's mother was uh, related to me, mm -hmm. but I want to say that uh, George inherited his goodness and his kindness and all of that. There were no people more kind than his parents, mm -hmm. and uh, the, it just continued down the line. And I loved being with him. He did all of those things you said for, you know, all of us. And uh, was always very gracious and kind. He was only a couple of years older than I. And even though my grandfather was his mother's brother, uh, he, you know, she had her children much later because she was much younger. So he was more my age than, you know, my mother's. Uh, age group, and so it was more like uh, cousins all the time. He's my second cousin, but he's just as close to me as my, you know, first cousins. We are a big, huge family. Thank you. Um, my name is John. I'm Lynn's sister and uh, Eric's cousin and um, George's nephew. Um, from my father, Arthur. And I just wanted to really thank George for taking me to Hawaii when I finished high school. Um, one of the best trips I've ever had. First time I went to that state. And we went to two islands, had a great time. And um, I still remember it very much so. And it's kind of inspired me to um, how to absorb attractions, study them, know their history and their culture, and um, really thank him for that. Mm. Hi, <clears throat> I'm Marlo Jones, um, and George and my father were very good friends. I knew George all my entire life. Um, he was always at the house. Uh, I remember going to Foster City, I think probably right when I got into high school, and I was into photography at the time, and George gave me my first enlarger uh, to use in developing photographs. And I remember it was like in a case, it was really cool, and I, I set it up, and, <clears throat> and that I progressed with that, you know, and built a dark room around it, and then I, you know, I got a little more money, and I could buy some better stuff. But one of the main things <clears throat> I remember about George is that he and my father were very close, and I think Lois and my mom were were nurses together for a while. Is that true? Or <laughs> were, were you? <laughs> I think I, anyway. The one thing I really remember is that we always had really nice GE appliances in, in our homes. <laughs> and, and, and thank George for that. Um, he was a great guy. You know, uh, there were a few other, you know, guys that hung around uh, with my dad kind of in that group that I've, mm -hmm. I've known all my life. And, you know, unfortunately, we're all getting older and, and uh, all of us aren't here anymore, including my, my family. So mm -hmm. anyway, that's kind of all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. 
wanted to let all your other folks go first so you could say all the good things about him. And, uh, you know, it's everything that was said here today is absolutely true. Um, he's there with Wesley. He's there with Aunt Bernice. He's there with Grandma Lizzie. He's there with Grandpa Arthur. They're all having barbecues at Aunt Lizzie's house, or Grandma Lizzie's house. We all remember that. We all remember going to Lizzie's house after church. We all remember all the good times that we had with my father. This is very hard for me, even though it's been many years coming. And maybe that's what I'm releasing at this point, but I want to thank you all for coming. I want to especially thank my Lodge brothers that are here today and have supported me all the way through. Everyone that supported my mother and our family, and I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sure there will be many other stories to be shared. As you remember, as, oh, I'm sorry, is there, is there anyone else who'd like to share? And there will be opportunities then to also share with the family, to give thanks, to share with each other. And what a privilege as, you know, I've just been here two years, I've met George, but I haven't not the privilege to know him as you have known him. And to share a witness of, the fruit of kindness in a family and love in such a way. You know, that kindness and love are not the things that we usually hold up in, uh, as powerful. And yet, the fruit of that is so evident. And so we praise God. We praise God for the spirit at work in George through so many of you and many more, I'm sure. Thanks be to God. I was going to say, George would probably be humming this song as I sing it. Precious Lord. Hmm. <clears throat> Precious Lord. Take my hand. 
Let us join together for a word of prayer. Eternal God, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have already turned despair into triumph and sorrow into joy. Give us faith, O Lord, to believe that every good that seems to be overcome by evil and every love that seems to be buried in death will rise again to life eternal through Jesus Christ. O oh God, all that you have given us is yours. And as first you gave George William Fox to us, now we give him back to you. Receive George into the arms of your mercy. Raise him up with all your people. And for all that our dear brother George has given us to make us what we are, for that of him that lives on in each of us and for his life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As we offer George back into your arms, comfort us in our loneliness. Strengthen us in times of weakness and give us courage to face the future unafraid. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another and make us faithful to serve each other, continuing his legacy of love and kindness and generosity. Guide us, O Lord. Fill us, Holy Spirit, that we might know the peace and joy that our dear brother George knew in part and now knows fully which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray together now the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we invite, uh, we invite you to stand as you are able as we sing our final song, Soon and Very Soon.
The family invites all to join them in our social hall at the end of the parking lot. If you just walk down that way, the large building on the left uh, for the repast after the service. Interment will be at two o'clock at Rolling Hills in Richmond and all are invited to join in the procession there. After our postlude, we will invite the funeral directors forward to lead us in uh, for the final closing. And now receive the benediction, dear friends, to the one who is able to keep us from falling, to make you stand without blemish in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you.